Hello everyone. Welcome to Linux Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some first steps. You know, what do you want to do first when you're getting into a forensics investigation? Now, recall from last time, we talked about the high-level process. And we said a call gets placed, and then you have to decide, is there an incident or not? If not, lessons learned are recorded. If so, you're going to start some sort of analysis, starting with live analysis, and then possibly dead analysis, and of course, everyone's favorite stuff comes later, writing those reports and documenting lessons learned. So, you have to be prepared. So what does it mean to be prepared? Well, you should have a response kit. And realistically, you should have more than one. You know, you could store everything you needed for both 32-bit and 64-bit systems on one media, but you could also have something separate. All right, so you need to have a complete set of system binaries. Well, why do you need that? If someone has compromised your computer, you cannot trust any of the utilities on that system. You know, someone might have trojaned the PS tool, the LS tool, all of them. So what you need to do is you need to mount an external media, and that can either be a CD-ROM or a USB. Now, some people would recommend the CD-ROM over the USB with the thought being that there is very little chance that a compromise of your Linux system involved the CD-ROM. So there's no contamination, if you will, of references to the CD-ROM from your mounting things and from an attacker mounting a CD-ROM. Uh, USB is slightly more likely, but honestly, it's, it's probably fine if you just want to use USB. Also, not every computer has a CD drive anymore. Hardware. What kind of hardware do you need? You should probably have a write blocker. We'll talk more about those later if you're going to perform some sort of dead analysis. And some media. Something to back up the target computer onto. You know, this could be a portable hard drive, or something else. And naturally, you'll need your forensics laptop. I say laptop. It could be a desktop, but that's a little bit hard to lug around with you. So ideally, you're going to have a forensics laptop computer. You should also have things like your bound notebook with the numbered pages for documentation, etc. So what about your workstation? What should it look like? I would recommend that you have at least eight gigabytes of RAM. If you have less than eight gigabytes of RAM, then you might have some performance issues. Also, I would recommend that you have at least one USB 3 port. If you're trying to make images of hard drives, which you've connected through USB to your laptop, it's going to be a little bit slow if you are restricted to USB 2 speeds. Also, I recommend that you have wired networking available. You know, maybe you like your thin little MacBook. However, in some cases, it's better to have a wired network. In particular, if I'm going to connect to a machine that's been compromised, and try to use something like Netcat to get information off of it. I would prefer to use wired networking, and in some cases, I might even use a crossover cable to connect to that machine. 
Naturally, like all real work, it requires Linux. I recommend that you use a 64-bit Linux. There's really not much reason to still be using 32-bit Linux. You could use a specialized distro such as SIFT from SANS, or you could use Ubuntu, or you could use your favorite distro. I will say this, however. Ubuntu is the most well-supported distro when it comes to InfoSec in general. And there is a reason why, you know, my Linux distro for the BeagleBones is based on Ubuntu. Sift is based on Ubuntu. So there are reasons for these things. So, you know, I know a lot of people aren't big fans of Ubuntu. I'm not necessarily a large fan either, but I use it because it is well supported. So how do you get the appropriate tools on your laptop? Well, you could install SIFT, and if you want to install SIFT on top of Ubuntu 1404, you can execute this command, this wget command, and it will go out to GitHub, and it will pull down a script, and then it's piped to a bash shell, and this will install SIFT on top of Ubuntu 1404. Incidentally, if you check and you look at their website, you will see that you could install SIFT in a virtual box. I don't recommend that for this situation. You know, if you have a situation where you're going out in the field and you're trying to do some incident response, I think it's kind of silly to run up a virtual box inside of your machine. That's just me. Now, if you're like me and you like to use your everyday Linux instead of some specialized Linux, you can just install the tools on top of Ubuntu 14.04 by using this script. It's the same wdet command, it just has less options here. It just says dash i. Hey, give me the tools, but I don't want all the other stuff. So let's show you how this works. So here on my Ubuntu laptop, I've installed or I'm going to attempt to install, rather, SIFT. So here's the script, wget, and see what happens when I do this. It tells me SIFT is only installable on Ubuntu 12.04 or 14.04, which is kind of a downer, but don't worry about it. Okay, so it's telling me you cannot install this on your computer because I happen to be running Ubuntu 14.10. And perhaps by the time you're watching this video, you're running a later version of Ubuntu that's also not supported by SIFT. Well, what I did is I wrote a pretty simple little shell script that will allow me to install all these tools. Again, it's nothing really special about SIFT. It is just going to add two repositories and then install a bunch of stuff. So here I have my script, which starts with the pound bang or hash bang or shebang, depending on who you ask. And then I have after that, my list of packages, and before my list of packages, I create some repositories. Now, I'm doing these kind of the backwards way, so just so you know, why am I doing it like this? Because I am not running Trusty, but Trusty is the only supported version of Ubuntu for these repositories, I lie to it and I tell it, please connect to Trusty. 
And this is the easiest way to connect to an older repository on Ubuntu. So I'm running 14.10 instead of 14.04. So I installed the 14.04 repositories, no problem. I directly install a couple of files in my app sources list dot D directory. And then I have my list of packages. So here's my list of packages. It's fairly long. Before I do my install, I call app get update since I just added two repositories. Here is a simple shell script. I say for package in package list, that huge list that I just scrolled through, do this. The first thing I say is, is it already installed? That's what this does. I run D package list, pipe that to awk. I print out the second item and grep for the package name and I send the results to dev null or the errors at least. So if that succeeded, then I just echo out, yeah, I already have it. Otherwise, I'm going to try to install it. So I'll echo out trying to install name of the package. I'll call app get install. Again, the errors go to dev null. And if that succeeds, then I will say it succeeded. Otherwise, I will say that it failed. And that's pretty much it. It's a very simple script. So if I again go out to my terminal window, and I already have my failed attempt, and I run this script. Now, in my case, I've already run this. So it's going to scroll by pretty quickly and tell me, yep, I've already done all of that. Now, in the case where you haven't already installed all of these things, you could look at a couple of hours to install all of this. It really depends on the speed of your system and if you have a good internet connection, etc. How much you already had installed. You know, if you're working in InfoSec, there's a good chance that a lot of this was already installed on your system anyway. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, make sure you tell a friend. We'll see you soon.